This may seem like nothing more than an elaborate game of join the dots. But each time Sam and Steve go back underground, they never lose sight of the potential dangers of their work. One of the truisms of cave diving is that complacency breeds death. And every single dive we approach as if it's the first dive we've done. And we have a ritual that we go through of matching our gear, checking for leaks, and making sure that everything is in optimum 100% condition for diving. Sam couldn't have a better dive buddy than Steve. He's one of the region's most experienced cave divers and a master technician. He knows his equipment inside out. Everything good here? You? Yeah, looks good. OK. OK, one of the first things you'll notice is that we're actually taking two tanks with us rather than one. That's because we're diving in an alien, potentially hostile environment, and we need redundancy in all our life support equipment, and gas supply is obviously very, very critical to us. We also use uh, a gas management planning rule known as the rule of thirds, so we'd use one third of our gas swimming into the cave, one third swimming back out again, so that when we surface, we have one third in reserve, and that's an emergency reserve should it take us longer to exit than we anticipated or if we needed to share air with a buddy. A thin piece of white string, carefully laid, quite literally becomes their lifeline. It may be the only way that they can find their way back, out of the labyrinth. They mark it with arrows that always point back towards the entrance and safety. It's also a measuring tape. Regularly spaced knots tell Sam and Steve how far they've gone. As we explore the cave systems, we try to be as smart as we can. And generally, we're trying to go in a particular direction. And we have compasses that work underwater. And using those compasses, we're able to determine which route to take. It's quite common to come up to uh, a split in a passageway. We have to determine which is the best route to take. In some cases, that'll end up in a dead end, and we turn around and come back out and try the other way. Using spools of string, Yucatan's cave divers have measured the longest underwater cave in the world, over 133 kilometers long. Exploration wouldn't be exploration if everything always went to plan. This time, the divers have come to a passage too tight to squeeze through, and they're forced to stop. They follow their safety line back and live to dive another day. But explorers wouldn't be explorers if they let such setbacks discourage them. There's always the thrill of the next dive. <laughs> 